Three men who are beaming with excitement despite the fact their own nations have had a mixed bag of results leading into the Rugby World Cup. Jim Hamilton, Hugo Moni and Ben Kayser. Good to see you, lads. See you. This is not a results-driven show. This is all about so fantasy. So-so. <laughs> so Ashley has got competitive early with you guys, this fantasy league. <laughs> How do you feel about fantasy? You do a lot of it, don't you, Hugo? I love it. I absolutely love it. It allows you, especially, I guess, considering some of the performances that my team's had in the build-up to this World Cup, where you can cherry pick some of the best players and effectively be a, be a coach. Be and a it's funny actually, you've done that and then Jim's copied all your picks, hasn't he? <laughs> Mate, no. honestly, Jim the Judas here has just <laughs> literally just looked over my shoulder and just nicked a few of them. Now an Englishman can have Finn Russell at 10, I was like, you are not having him. <laughs> and also just... You talk about yourself. <laughs> Do you know we played England under 21s together? I don't, I don't remember it, but I'm going to go back to your initial point. You said that the teams haven't had a great start to the World Cup warm-up. Scotland, have I said a mixed bag. Yeah. Scotland, yeah. Been, Fire. Scotland have been on the, on the right side. You lost um, your last match. Yeah, I know, but we were good. <laughs> you, you two have been arguing, and Ben turned up, and he seems quietly confident with his fantasy team. I'm happy. I'm no, happy. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get enough of rugby <laughs> in the next couple of months. Yeah. And so if there's an, an argument of being you know, an extra coach and actually picking out who can be there, but as long as I got my superstar, I'm happy. I'm not going to say he's sort of the, the shadow behind everybody else. Yeah. So as long as yeah, I can, can I nothing question. can happen. Yeah. Looking at the three of us, mm. you've probably had eyes on our teams. Who do you think would be the best fantasy manager? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. <laughs> One brain for three. I think Perfect. the way you two were arguing earlier, I'd go with Ben. Yeah. He's a bit calm about the whole thing. Yeah, fair. And I think he's really interested in the rules. In case you're wondering, <laughs> here's how it works. When it comes to the fantasy team game, every match matters and every player can make a difference to your squad. Up to 100 points must be spent wisely across 15 on-field positions with a maximum of three players per nation in the group stages. Points are scored for a variety of attacking style plays including tries, assists and metres made. There are also plenty of points on offer for defensive plays too like turnovers, interceptions, scrums and much, much more. With 33-man squads making up 20 teams, there are 660 players to pick from. Who will shine in the early stages? Let's remind ourselves of the pools. The host France start us off in Pool A against the mighty All Blacks. How many from Italy, Uruguay and Namibia will feature in your side? Pool B could be the pool of death, but if you get your picks right in this game, it could be the making of you. Who will prevail, current world champion South Africa Ireland, who are currently at the top of the rankings, or a Scotland team on fire. A few stars to consider in the Tonga team too. Pool C is fascinating. You want a fast start in this fantasy game, and with points on offer both sides of the ball, who will you consider from Wales, Australia, Fiji, Georgia, and Portugal? Pool D has a misfiring England team, but with strength in depth. We know Japan can spring a surprise, and Argentina will definitely fancy themselves to go a long way. Add a few star-studied Samoans and a relatively unknown entity in Chile. Just like team selection at the Rugby World Cup, managing your team correctly is the key to fantasy showdown success. So get involved, tell your mates. Uh, all you have to do is have a look at the QR code which is on your screen now. Take a picture of it, download it, and off you go. All right, let's begin. To make sure you get a good start with the fantasy showdown, have a look at this. This is 2019, and the positions uh, were the top try scorers during the tournament. You can see the fullbacks, uh, the outside centres, scrum half. But actually, lads, it's all about the wingers. It's all about the glory. So we'll start with the back three, shall we? Should we start with that? Ben, talk us through who you've gone with your fancy team. Back three. So my back three, I've gone with Big Duan van der Merve on the wing. The muscle. I've gone with Ange Capuzzo, the fullback from Italy, the artist. And I've gone with my man, Damien Penot on the wing. Headless chicken, takes the M25 to <laughs> run everybody else. But one hell of a fantastic player. I thought you might go for a, a French lad to yeah. start things off. Yeah. But that's an interesting choice there. So you've gone for Scotland, Van der Meer, scored some amazing tries in the warm-up games. And Capuzzo, I think he had more line breaks than England did in total against Ireland, although that wasn't probably that, that hard based on... <laughs> 
that game. Why Penol? Why do you like him so much? Ah, uh, look, he, I was lucky enough to play with him in Clermont in 2017. See him come out. Played oh, with that, didn't you? I did play with that. Thanks for reminding me. That's a bit of a <clears throat> yeah, a bit of a reminder. <laughs> An unbelievable player, a freak of nature, a great athlete. Doesn't have. He's not like Jasmine Kobe, where you think that he, he's quick because he's got small small feet. But he actually has got, he's, he's tremendous uh, in the contact. He's deceptively fast, great under the high ball. Used to play outside center. Now position himself on the win and he's learning the trade of all the defensive little bits and he's getting really good. And I just love his attitude. He does not have a care in the world. He'll play with a big smile on his face. That's why the headless chicken is a bit of a compliment for me. You know, he just runs with it, see where it takes him. And he's a br brilliant boy as well. You speak to any coaches and you say money ball, even though Penno would be expensive. <laughs> yeah. A lot of coaches, would say Damien Penno. Mm. Everyone loves him. The yeah. stuff he does off the ball and the highlight moments as well. As, as, Can as, I have well, it? As, 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 as Jim and Ben have just read all that information <laughs> and related it. But as a winger, what do you actually think of Penno? I think sensational. I think you've got a brilliant collection of back three players. Capuazzo beats players for fun, scores loads of tries. Penno really compliments it. Quite similar to Van der Merwe. Van der Merwe through traffic is sensational. I don't think there's another player on the planet quite like him, but Penno's so explosive, so powerful. But probably the most important thing, especially about Penno and Van der Merwe, they play in two teams that like to play to the whip, so they'll get lots of opportunities to be able to score tries. And scoring tries, 15 points 15 for points. a try. Yeah. That's a, that's a premium. That's why, they're, that's why they're expensive lads. And also, that is an expensive back three. So your forwards can't be very good. I don't, I don't want to say, you were my hooker at Leicester, played against each other a lot of the time, so it's going to be interesting to see where the value is. that's a good thing for is. this, right? You've gone for high scoring. Exactly. Do you not pay money? attention? It's just no. showed the stats. That's yeah. the first time I've seen it. That's All of them are backs. Than you. You All of them are backs. You've got to be efficient. Wait until you got to look at the back three. If I knew that before we did this, I would have changed my back <laughs> three. He didn't copy him on this one, did he? Uh, we'll get to you in a sec. Go on, Hughes. What you got for your back three? I really like my back three. I've got Ange Capuazzo, similar to you. Brilliant player, wonderful talent. Um, I've also got Will Jordan. Playing in that New Zealand team, he is going to score tries. Was it 25 caps, 25 tries? He's amazing, isn't He's he? absolutely Doesn't won. travel well, apparently, though. <laughs> That's what I heard. I did hear that. I read that <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> it's just like, you know. Utter nonsense. I've gone for uh, Edinburgh and Argentinians Emiliano Buffelli. Yeah. Not only is he a try scorer, but he's also a goal kicker yeah. as well. Yeah. So that there's, I've got two strands of where he could potentially score points. So that, as a collective, I'm really, really happy with. I think he's like 83% off the tee as well. Exactly. Uh, Japan, England, Samoa, Chile in the group. He's going to score some points. There's loads of points there for him, just mm. off the tee as well as out wide. So really pleased with that. Right, he's picked it up. What's your back three? I have gone for someone outside of the box, because I've seen how important the right wing is. I would have gone all Scotland back three because we're so right. good now and expensive. Well, they're expensive, so I haven't been able to do that. So, you ready for this? The Portuguese flyer, the great, wonderful Vincent Pinto mm. on my right wing. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll have that. So you've gone against you all the advice that you've heard before you. <laughs> You've gone with a Portuguese winger. I have, okay. yes. You want to see what's inside him, though. So now you get the most points for try scorers. Well, I didn't realise it was specifically the right wing until we got oh, just, here today. The, he's, got, he's got Wales, Australia, Fiji in his group. He's going to score a lot of tries, is he? Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right. You want to hear the other two? Because yeah, I do. This might, I do. Because they might get <laughs> yeah. the ball. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So he's coming a bit cheap. He's coming at three points. So you've saved some points. Uh, for elsewhere. I don't want to be horrible to Vincent, but he did. He was the last pick. And I, <laughs> yeah, so I love Portugal. Played against him in 2007. Mm. Just, just say, say that. Loves the Nando's. Yeah, so like that. I thought they were South African Nando's. <laughs> the other two are very special oh. though. I've gone for Mac Hansen on the oh, left really wing. Solid. Happy Lovely. with that? Yeah. He was cheaper than I thought. Mac Hansen. I'll be honest with how effective he is. He gets man of the match all the time. But that's, yeah, a tough pool. That. that's a tough pool. Scotland and South Africa as well. Ireland can score tries against them. I might have done this all wrong because <laughs> I've just either picked my mates or lads that I think look good. Do we have well. time for a story? Because there is there is a mate story with Matt Hansen, isn't there? Yeah, well, we, we are mates. I've got his name tattooed on my arm, Show which us. is slightly embarrassing. Sure. Yeah. Why? Why? Big Mac. We lost, Big, uh, I lost a bet. Big Mac and it's So me and Matt Hansen had, um, had a bet whilst we were chatting, he said he would get Andy Farrell's face tattooed on his leg if they won the Grand Slam. Which they did. Which they did. And he got the tattoo. And I said if Ireland beat Scotland in the Six Nations, I would get Big Mac tattooed That's on That's just a bad uh, bet. 
Because they was always going to win. That's commitment to my team, though. <laughs> commitment Blends to my in. team. And Matt talk, Hansen. Matt Hansen, talking of commitment to my team. Yeah. I've got Blair Kinghorn at 15, who is on fire. Meat is made, great under the high ball, can kick a little bit if we're going into the real nuts and bolts of it, but brilliant 15. But when you say kick it, like Finn Russell kicked it for goal, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> but you like, I'd imagine you like that pick, because Stuart Hogg, obviously, yeah. made the World I Cup. I think Kinghorn's a, a brilliant player. It's been great. But putting the lens of <clears throat> fantasy into it, you get points for goal kicking and scoring tries. The team that wins the World Cup will also be the top try scorer, and that's why you get 15 points for a try. So I've gone for point scorer at T, at goal, and try scorers. He's gone for his Portuguese mate, his other <laughs> mate with his tattoo, and his other mate who plays for Scotland. And all three of them might not make it, or one of them will <laughs> make it out of the pool, but out of Scotland and Ireland, potentially not. So okay. I don't know what I've done. You want to see the forwards, though? <laughs> they're, they're monsters. That's like the third time he says that. <laughs> it's a strong-ish start. That's the back three. Let's have a look at the centres. We are on to centres next. Surely someone has picked this man, the Fijian uh, captain, Semi Rodradra. Ten points. He's got to be in the team, hasn't he, Jim? No, too expensive for me. <laughs> well, he's not in yours? Has anyone He's got not, him? Not me. No. Or oh, we just want to share just yet. Well, we can't change it now. Ooh. Well, when you say about sharing, I mean, Jim's going to share his centre partnership first which is basically the one that I picked, because I caught him <laughs> looking over my shoulder yeah, and making I notes. I saw that, actually. I couldn't believe right. how cheap Malakai Fekatoa, World Cup winner in 2015 with New Zealand, he's now playing for Tonga. I thought, he's five. I thought, semi's ten. Is he double the player? I'll, I'll let other people decide. <laughs> Have you just saved all your points for the forward? You wait. <laughs> you wait. We can't wait. I don't, know so, think, I don't think they score tries or kick a goal, <laughs> which is obviously what it takes, but it's, it looks good. But Can I ask, your centre partner, which you're just about to reveal, just honestly, just between you and I, did you only make that pick because you saw it on my page? Well, truth looked like truth. I heard you saying he was a good player and he did a lot with the ball and set up tries. So I picked Geordie Barrett at 13. He was a lot so cheaper. Ridiculous. He was a lot cheaper than I thought. How can I work with this? Well. Is he going to play centre in the, in the World Cup? Uh, yeah, it. they've worked with him at 12 a lot this year, especially in the Rugby Championship. He's been brilliant. Has he been at 13? I've got him at 13. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's fine. For this fantasy <laughs> showdown, it doesn't matter. You said yes as well. You think he's going to play centre? Because he can play everywhere. I, th I thought he he's, be, 10, he's, he's been 15. spectacular all summer, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it's his favourite position, even for him, but bloody hell, he's delivering. So I think it's a good pick, to be fair. Bloody hell in Britain is a swear word, just so you know. OK, but I'm French, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, just... Just so to be clear. Nailed on. Malachi Fekatoa at 12, Geordie Barrett, 13. Which is exactly what you've got, isn't it? You got, yeah, <laughs> I went for Malachi Fekatoa because he's brilliant, absolutely. Jim's already said it. Um, World Cup winner. I think he'll add an element of steel into that tongue and centre partnership and Geordie Barrett. So, with Buffelli and Geordie Barrett, I've also got two goal kickers and I've got another try scorer. So yeah, he is a utility player that could shift from 12 to 15 onto the wing, but he's someone that seems to be a mainstay and the glue in the all-black side. So like Tonga, they've got Ireland, Scotland, South Africa, Romania in the group. I mean, he does get a few turnovers, yep. that'll get you four points, but is he going to assist? Is he going to well, score tries? When you look at the composition of the back line, it all starts to make sense, because you can't go oh, okay. high octane and mm -hmm. top shelf every single player. it doesn't player. make a lot of sense now, right? It doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense now, but it will be revealed. <laughs> but that's not taken away. I mean, even though he's cheap, he's still a World Cup winner, Absolutely. so it will add his value. 